wrote one-time Governor B.F. Perry. After mature reflection, I believe Colonel Delaney has exhibited in his speeches more wisdom and prudence, more honor and patriotism than any other Republican, white or black, in South Carolina. Delaney wrote that should the homeless become landowners, they would at once become proportionately interested in the affairs of state before either schoolhouse or church can be erected. He said, the people themselves must be settled in homes of their own. Friedman were leaving the state, denied the once promised 40 acres, virtually all back in original hands, and their life savings, deposited faithfully in the Freedman Savings and Trust Company, now gone from mismanagement. Delaney knew his plan could work. In three years, he organized white cotton wholesalers and Freedman farmers on Hilton Head Island into a peaceable alliance that grew and harvested the crop profitably. Moses was elected, and so was Honest John, who boasted that he bought his seat in the United States Senate for $40,000. But Governor Moses continued to drive even higher the state debt. It had already soared from one to over $17 million in the previous five years. Moses then raised taxes on freeholders to pay for all of this. And he lined his pockets with priced pardons sold to 503 imprisoned felons. And they were all released into this heavily armed, hate-filled powder keg land. And Governor Moses gave Delaney no job. Reverend Cain wrote Moses, I had assured Mr. Delaney that you would not break faith. He has staked all on your word. For heaven's sake, do not cast him away. Seeing Beaufort's old St. Helena Church summed up a visitor's feeling in 1873 about every South Carolina town he saw. It was one of complete prostration, dejection, stagnation. Utter stagnation marks its streets, and everything is flavored with decay. The mockingbird sings as if winter has no meaning for them. The old mansions are permeated with the air of desertion. The merry tinkling that proceeds from the closed shutters of one of them seems altogether dissonant with the surroundings. Bad crops, bad weather, a lost position in world cotton markets, a national depression. This all contributed. So, by 1874, all of South Carolina, including Delaney's beloved Hilton Head, looked like an armed camp. The Ku Klux Klan was forming almost 300 rifle clubs that once beat 200 freedmen and killed four more in just nine months in just one county. Freedmen either armed themselves or prayed the federal troops would never leave. Some freedmen and their families slept in the swamps in the mild winter where the men in hoods and face masks could not find them. Wrote the editor of the Edgefield Advertiser in one of the state's most strife-torn counties. Good people now look upon the entire electoral contest as a struggle between thieves and plunderers. And they worried 
Among the whites is a class of men who hold human life at little value. And among the colored people there is a class who do not wish to labor and are known as habitual thieves or disturbers of the peace. General Rufus Saxton wrote back his old friend Robert Smalls about these darkest of times in South Carolina. I rejoiced when the right of suffrage came, and I sorrowed when it was told that some had sold this precious birthright for a miserable mess of pottage. <laughs>